And this service requires that we all are in sync. Yes, Amen. Thank you so much for sitting. God bless you. When you yeah, when you're singing, you sing. I, I don't know. How so we are here like, to celebrate the yeah, life of a great yeah. man of God. Everybody say, great yeah. man of God. He's um, just up to a few weeks ago, brother. Is it a few weeks ago? Some days back, we were talking about pastor, right? We're just discussing about him, how he touched our lives, what he did for us, even for those who did not even see him physically. He touched their lives. And I know that same spirit is here today. Our lives will be touched because remembering what he has done for us. Oh my God, look at doctor. Doctor is here. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, just remembering, like as, I, as if I knew he was one of those who didn't even see him physically, but was touched by his presence, his aura, what he's done. So that is the kind of person that we have come to celebrate. That is the letter that we have come for, to listen to. So I want you to put yourself together because God is about to do amazing things in our midst this morning. Let's understand that the presence of the Lord is here and it will work wonders in our life. And as we continue in the service, you will attest to what I have just said. God will do wonders in our midst. Opening prayer by Dick and Joshua. Praise the Lord. Let's stand up. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for everything you are going to do today. Thank you for our guest speaker. Thank you for our pastor, Pastor Paul Adewale. Thank you for the day of remembrance of Pastor Oluyomi Adewale. The, 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 founders, the founders of this ministry. Thank you for great things you are going to do today. Thank you for wonders you are going to do today. Father, we soak everything in the blood of Jesus. We scatter every evil garden today in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the power come down in a new way in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for fresh fire today in the name of Jesus Christ. The light of God will shine brighter than before in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for light of revival today in the name of Jesus Christ. We commit the physical to his hand today, empower him in the name of Jesus Christ. Make his tongue like pen of red writer in the name of Jesus Christ. As men that will come today, they will be blessed. Their life will be transformed. There will be salvation galore, healing galore in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. Father, we worship you. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Before we go into the praise worship, we'll take the first hymn. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. In every rough and stormy girl. My anchor hold within the veil When all around my soul give way He then is all my hope and stay On 
Come Christ the Son, lead rock and stand on all the ground. We sink in sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Not it, not hell, my soul can move. I rest upon unchanging love. I trust his righteous character, his counsel promise and his power. On Christ the Son, lead rockers on all the ground is sinking sand. We'll take the last stanza. Mm. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I in him be found. Dress in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the Lord, rock I sing. Oh Lord, I cry. You seek His eyes. Oh Lord, I cry. As many of us that know we are standing on the rock that is different from every other rock, I want us to take that chorus again. On Christ's soul, we draw a stand. Oh Lord, the ground is sinking sand. Oh Lord, the ground is sinking. On Christ the saw, lead a rock I stand. Lift your hands. All of the ground is seeking sound. All of the ground is seeking sound. Come on, let's put our hands together for Jesus. He's the awesome God. He's the great God. He's the Alpha. He's the Omega. He's the beginning. He is the end. Can I get a witness in the house this morning? Do you agree with me that Jesus died and he rose again on the third day that you and I can have life more and abundantly. Come on, put those hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus, we praise you. Jesus, we praise you. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for everything that you have done for us. I can't get a witness. Somebody give the Lord a sound offering. Give the Lord a praise offering. For, because God is good and forever he is good somebody make some noise yeah. hallelujah is somebody ready to praise him this morning you better get ready because if it has not been for God who was on our side Woo! you know some people slept last night there are no more today you have every cause to give God praise yeah. mm. 
Glory be to my God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, glory be to my God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, glory be to my God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah. Your glory, your glory, hallelujah, eh, eh. hallelujah, hallelujah, eh. hallelujah, hallelujah, eh. hallelujah, hallelujah, eh. hallelujah, hallelujah, eh. we sing your glory, we sing your glory, your glory, your glory, hallelujah, eh. Glory, 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 hallelujah. Two for seven, I will praise you, Jehovah. Two for seven, I will praise your holy name. Two for seven, two for seven. I will praise you. I will praise you forever. Two for seven, two for seven. I will praise. I will praise your holy name. Two for seven, two for seven. I will praise you. I praise you forever. Two for seven, two for seven. I will praise you. I will praise your holy name. Two for seven, two for seven. Because you've been good to me, I will praise you forever. Hallelujah, say two for seven. I will praise, I will praise your holy name. I will truly praise, I praise like a winner, man. Oh, when you see me praise, I praise like a winner, man. Oh, when you see me praise. I praise like a winner, man. Oh, when you see me praise, I praise like a winner, man. Oh, when you see me praise, I praise like a winner, man. Oh, when you see me praise, I praise like a winner, man. Oh, when you see me praise, I praise like a winner, man. Oh, when you see me praise, I praise like a winner, man. Oh, winner, man. Oh, winner, man. Oh, winner, man. Oh, we are man, 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 oh, you see me dance. I dance like a winner, man. Oh. When you see me dance, I dance like a winner, man. Oh. When you see me dance, I dance like a winner, man. Oh. When you see me dance, come on, everybody. I dance like a winner, man. Oh. When you see me dance, I dance like a winner, man. Oh. When you see me dance, I dance like a winner, man. Oh. Has God been good to you? Has God been good when to you? See me dance, I dance like a winner, man. Oh. When you see me dance, 
I dance like a wiener man. Oh. When you see me dance, I dance like a wiener man. Oh. When you see me dance, I dance like a wiener man. Oh. When you see me dance, I dance like a wiener man. Oh. When you see me clap, I clap like a wiener man. Oh. When you see me clap, I clap like a wiener man. Oh. Clap your hands, clap your hands, clap your hands. Clap your hands when you see me clap. I clap like a wiener man. Oh. When you see me clap, I clap like a wiener man. Oh. When you see me clap, I clap like a wiener man. Oh, 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 wiener man. You are lifted, you 
are lifted, you are lifted. You are lifted, you are lifted, you are lifted. You are lifted, you are lifted. You are lifted. Above, Something that makes me come into your presence. I am God. You've been good. You've been kind. You've been awesome. I have come to give you praise. I have come to give you worship. I have come to say thank you. There is something that makes me come into your presence. My helper, 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 my helper. There is something that makes me come into your presence. My helper, 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 my helper. There is something that makes me come into your presence. My helper. Come on, lift those hands. My help, my help, my help, my help, my help. Come on, sing now. My help, my help, my help, my help. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name, sing like never before, oh my Worship your holy name. Bless the Lord, say, Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. I worship, worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Sing like never before. Oh my soul, oh my soul. I worship, worship the Lord. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Worship His holy name. Sing, sing like never before. Oh my soul, oh my soul. Oh worship Him. Worship His holy name. Somebody lift your hands. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Oh my soul, oh my soul, Lord, I worship you. Worship me, Lord, I will sing like never before. Never 
Just the voices, just the voices alone, the voices alone, we give you all the glory. Come on, from the depth of your heart, we worship you. You are worthy. Let's sing one more time in uniform. We give you, we give you. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You are awesome, God. We worship. Hallelujah. I want us to just begin to pray in the spirit. Let's begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Even right now, let's begin to pray in the spirit. Destiny changer, you are my destiny changer. Come and change my destiny, my destiny right now. Come and change my destiny, my destiny right now. Is that your prayer? Come on now, destiny changer. You are the destiny changer. Marabotone. God changed my destiny. My destiny today. Right now, right now. God changed my destiny. My destiny right now. Miracle. Miracle worker. You are the miracle worker. Yes. Come and do a miracle, a miracle right now, right now, right now. Right now. Come and do a miracle, a miracle right now. Miracle, miracle worker. Do you believe that? You are the miracle worker. Come and do a miracle, a miracle right now. Hallelujah. Come and do a miracle, a miracle right now. Destiny changer, destiny changer. You are the destiny changer. Come and change a destiny. A destiny right now. Oh, I change a destiny. A destiny right now. Your name is Yahweh. Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. You are the destiny changing God. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Brothers and sisters, we just prayed a prayer. Well, I'm just going to use a scripture to back what you just sang, to back what we just sang. This is the season of miracle. This is the season where destinies are changed. We are going to pray. We are going to pray. Please, I want you to open your heart and pray. Your destiny is going to change for the best. 
there will be a miracle today right now in your life in the lives of your family that you will remember this day and say it was on that program that this miracle happened that this change occurred let's quickly open our bibles to luke chapter 2 luke 2 and verse 10 luke 2 and verse 10 the lord is doing a miracle he has started to do it luke 2 10 he says and the angel said unto them fear not for behold i bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people and let's look at luke 1 35 luke 1 35 brothers and sisters i just want the scriptures to back this song we just sang and so we know how to pray it's going to be a freestyle prayer you will talk to the lord luke 1 35 it says and the angel answered said unto her the holy ghost shall come upon you and the power of the highest shall overshadow you therefore also that only thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the son of god two things happened there destiny was changed and a miracle occurred by reason of a supernatural visitation I want you to open your mouth to heaven this morning and just cry out to Jesus. I need a visitation from you today. Let there be a, a repeating performance. I don't know what areas of your life you are trusting God for a miracle. Just talk to the Lord, the power of the highest Holy Ghost. Overshadow me. Overshadow me. I don't know what area. The destiny maker, the one who can change destiny. The miracle worker is here. Talk to the Lord. What areas do you need a visitation? The angel of the Lord, he visited Mary. And guess what? There was a miracle. Destiny was changed. Talk to the Lord right now. Please don't just look at me. Pray. Pray for yourself. Pray for your family. Pray for yourself. In Jesus' name. The second prayer. This is a season of glad tidings. It is a season of what? Glad tidings. I want you to talk to the Lord. Is there any tidings that is not good? That is all route towards you. I want you to change it. Return it back to the sender. Say, I refuse and I reject any evil tidings. Any evil news. I reject it. I refuse it. Go back to your sender. And I want you to begin to call. Glad tidings. Glad tidings. Glad tidings. Bad glad tidings, bad glad tidings. What areas of your life as the angel visits you? Glad tidings, glad tidings in your marriage, in your finance, in the lives of your children. Glad tidings. And finally, just pray as we continue, Lord, visit me. Take over this meeting by your spirit. Take over, take over, take over, Holy Ghost. Take over, take over, take over. And pray for yourself. I will not be distracted. When the angel come around giving blessings, I will not be refused to be distracted. Refuse it. Because the angel of the Lord, we are standing on a holy ground. When the angel of the Lord comes, will he find you distracted or focused on the Lord Jesus? We refuse. We bind every spirit of distraction. We bind them. We bind them. We arrest them. And we say, Lord, be glorified, be magnified. Your name is Yahweh. Walking God, your name is Yahweh. Destiny helper, you are the destiny helper. Come and help my destiny, my destiny today. Come and help my destiny, 
la destinée du Dieu, j'en ai mis à lui. My Yahweh is here, you are the help of you are the destiny of the God, j'en ai mis à lui. Amen. Alléluia. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. To God be the glory. Great thing is He has done. Is the hymn we're going to take before we sit down. You know, your destiny needs help. You understand? If all you carry is what everybody carries, there's no difference. The help of God is what makes the difference in our life. It's what they will make them to say, those things I prefer, and the other person I do not. In the name of Jesus. May we enjoy the help of God in our destiny in the name of Jesus. Amen. So can we have the lyrics? It's a hymn. I, I can guarantee you I don't know everything by heart. So let's follow. Let's follow the lyrics and all, all of us sing it together. Are you ready? To God be the glory. So, the, the, the chorus says, Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the hurt hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Who call to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the Things he has done. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let, Let the head hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. To come to the Father, to Jesus, the Son, and give the glory. The things he has done to God be the glory. The things he has done so lofty the water he gave us his son who yielded his life and had so many for sin and who the life gate that all may go praise the Lord praise the Lord praise the Lord let the angel be God praise the Lord praise the Lord let cornerstone be joy oh come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory Hallelujah! Let's give God the highest praise. Let's have our seats in heavenly places. The other black fire above principalities. This one. That's Our God is here. This, okay, this the one. Most High God yeah. is here. Amen. It's just, it's just Thank you so much. Our highly esteemed Amen. choir. God bless the you so much. That will be Amen. The Amen. I just want to welcome everyone to yeah. this great And event. even those ones, the way they we have come to celebrate the, one in Damalas, the life of our Father in the Lord. It rotates and makes Pastor a lot of noise. Ulu I don't know whether whether the shaft is affected or whatever. I thought you were going to clap. Yes. Even the one currently in our room, too, when he's rotating. That's the man that we have come to celebrate. Some funny noise We've come to well. give God thanks. I don't know whether na, what na shaft or he represents or what he did worry. when he was here on earth. And I know that this service will be a blessing to every one of us in Jesus' name. I want to welcome our online brethren. There are some people who are in Nigeria, there are some people who are in India, there are some people who are in Germany, who are in this service right now all over the world, they are hooked up. Let's give them a wave offering. Let's give them a wave offering. Say, we, we see you, we see you, we see you, we see you. We see you. Amen. And I want to also thank God for your life. There's no way we would have had this program 
if you didn't come. We thank God for those who came all the way from Pennsylvania, those who came from Maryland, those who came from all the way far in New York. Benga Wise is here. Put your hands together for our guest minister. Amen. Those who came all the way from New Jersey. Look at Brother Chris is here in the house. Look at our New Jersey brethren. They're all here. I'm excited. I'm excited. Tony is here too. You're from New Jersey, right? God bless you. Amen. <laughs> Unless if you change location. Whenever you change location, your location is there. Amen. I know about those from Staten Island. I know you were like, this guy is not going to mention us. Listen, you guys are landlord. Starting Island, brother, put your hands together for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Isn't this wonderful for us to celebrate a great man who touched humanity, touched life like never before? Even till like a few days ago, me and Brother were just discussing, talking about Pastor. There's one word he used to say absolutely, absolutely. Absolutely. That word stays in my head, in my brain. Absolutely. Anytime you hear, anytime I tell Brad Tussie, absolutely. He, he, <laughs> he knows what I'm talking about. That's Pastor Yomi Adewale. Please join me and put your hands together for him. A man who values education, put your hands together for him. A man who wants to push you to your destiny, put your hands together for him. A man who values prayer, put your hands together for him. A man who values evangelism, put your hands together for him. A one who knows that things are going wrong with you, put your hands together for him. A man who is in, in there when you are sick, he's there with you in the hospital, put your hands together for him. A man who has erected a beauty like this for us to come to worship, put your hands together for him. If not that he gave, if not that he was sent, if not that he, he, he took it away, all that he has, just to make sure that people are enjoying what we are enjoying now, put your hands together for him. He's a man of honor. He's a man of grace. He's a man of power. He's a man of great reward. And I know that God in heaven is smiling over his servant. And not only smiling, he's also smiling over his offspring, over his children, over his wife, over his, uh, the, the great-grandchildren. Because of what he has done, all because he gave. Wonderful man. We celebrate you, Pastor Yomi Adewale. We give God thanks for your life, for what you do, for what you have done. Because when I say what you do, you are still doing. Because what you left on us, we are giving to others. What you deposited in us, we are still giving to others. It's still enough for us to give to others. That's why we can talk about him. Put your hands together for Pastor Yomi Adewale. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I feel him right now. I feel what he has done in this place. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Let's have our seat. I will call on um, our beloved brother. Well, I was just here talking about some people never saw Pastor Yomi Adewale. Right? They never saw him. But they felt him. Why? Because there's something they call transfer. Transfer. You know, when heat energy transfer by conduction, you know, they transfer. Somehow, you know, that thing was uh, transferred. Eh? Well, you say something. That thing was transferred to this brother. He said, I never saw this man, but the way you people talk about him, I feel him. I, 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 it's like I touch him. And the brother is in the house today. It's no bro other brother than Dr. Ojo. He's in the house. He's, he's going to tell us about the foundation. God bless you, sir. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's good to be back home. Thank you, church. Uh, good morning, Pastor. 
it's really good to see you again. It's great to be uh, here to see everyone. A um, little nervous, you know, uh, you know, to talk about a great man. Again, man that I never met in person. Never met him in person. But he was great. And his greatness stays here and lingers forever. I would like to talk about the mission of this program and the mission that this great man had and this mission that has continued and will continue in Jesus' name. The mission is to award scholarships to university students who demonstrate superlative intellect and all financial need to provide, and we have a vision here too, And the vision is to provide students with the tools necessary to pursue higher education. Since inception, over 20 years, over 23 scholarships have been awarded. Scholarships have been awarded to students in India, Nigeria, and the United States of America. Last year, scholarships were given to two undergraduate students in the United States of America. In Nigeria, scholarships awards were given to learners. A scholarship fund was set up by the Foundation for the University of Lagos. Students through like the Lagos Varsity Student uh, Christian Union. So this foundation is in the process of establishing a scholarship fund in the Christian University in Nigeria. So, what, I will use bra, Minister Israel's word. If you want to clap, clap. <laughs> yeah. This year, two college students will be awarded scholarships. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. Today, we are all going to be part of something great. So be prepared. If you want to clap, clap now. Uh, you see somebody even borrowing my words. Very, very soon my words will be in the dictionary. You see, I say I'm a, I'm a very good soccer fan. So I saw of late, this guy, you know, my team is Chelsea football team, so... Sorry, I'm not, uh, you know. So, this, our coach is Mourinho. So, we love the club because of that guy. You know, so, but the issue is, for, of late, I discovered that some words that he used, they were not part of the football dictionary registered. The football dictionary. Very soon, that word will be in the dictionary. You'll be looking for me. All glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's just a crack a joke, you know. So if I too tight, Mama is saying time is going. Mama, relax. Why not relax? <laughs> Hallelujah. Let people have some fun in the house. Is there anyone that wants to have fun in the house? I just want you to have fun today in the house. Praise the Lord, anyhow, sit anyhow, dance anyhow, jump anyhow, and also give anyhow. Hallelujah. Amen. We have um in our midst. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The Lord is in this place. So, everywhere, everyone, let's just be a little bit quiet. Come as we go into the next section. This is the next session. Let's pay attention to me, please. This is the next session. The next session is when... When we started making plans for this program, the foundation came up with a plan that we should make a very short video. You know, tell us about the benefits of education. You tell us about the benefit of education. Please, let's just focus on me. Unless, uh, you know, Yalabo Sikaya Dada Shanta Lekuta Basika Yalaha. So, 
So the benefits of education, we, the foundation said we should put it in a short video and present it. And if you win, to God be the glory. So we have a sister in the house, one of our very highly esteemed sister, who will be coming out to tell us the winner of that scholarship. It's not a person, the minister. For last day. Oh, yeah, buddy. If you want to clap, clap. Hallelujah. 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 We bring under control every other spirit under the power of the Holy Ghost, under the power of the blood of Jesus. We declare this place a place of power and of grace in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everyone. It's been in a very interesting time, powerful time in the presence of the Lord. We want to appreciate God for each and every one of us. I want to thank God for our mom in the Lord. I want to thank God for her. I know we, we talk a little bit about the foundation here, but the foundation does a lot more. <laughs> I hear mommy say sometimes, I cannot allow that to happen. I, you know, we, we have to say to that. <laughs> I know a lot of things that goes, not some things, don't let me say a lot, <laughs> some things that go under the, under the, um, uh, behind the curtain, but we want to thank God for this opportunity. And I also want to thank God for um, brothers and sisters that are here, the biological children of our Father in the Lord, we want to appreciate you for all that you do. I know you support this a lot. It's a passion in you, and we want to appreciate you a lot. We want to also appreciate everyone that is a spiritual child in this house. We want to thank God for you, for all the support. We want to thank God for the dignitaries all over the world watching this program as well, supporting this program. We want to thank God for every member of CCM, men and women, here and on, online. We want to appreciate you. So today we are presenting again to two people uh, what this, foundation, this great foundation is offering for, for this year at this time. I know it's just two people that we are presenting to here, but when the need arises every day, I see the foundation supporting men, women here and there. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So the topic that they were given was the future of traditional and non-traditional education. And a, a lot of people actually came in to offer what they had online, recording the video. And a lot of them were very creative. There, is a great, there are great things in, in our children. And we want to thank God because the, the um, Foundation Award is coming to CCM, to United States. Both Foundation Award are coming to us. Let's just celebrate CCM on Staten Island in New York, in the United States. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The first award goes to, you wanna guess? <laughs> goes to Rebecca Turi. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That was awesome, awesome work done, awesome work done, the Lord bless you. Awesome work done, awesome work done. The Lord bless you, the Lord bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, when we sing that song, uh, na dobu, dobu, you don't know what God has in store for us. For the rest of this year, and as we go into 2023, double blessings. I mean, double blessings. This will surprise you, but double blessings. Our second award goes to Rachel Ture. Both of them are twin sisters. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Amen. I know our time is our spent, but we want to appreciate God for these uh, young ones. They are parents in the house. They serve God with passion. I want to thank God for you. It's not just serving God alone. They're also there educationally, and God is helping them. And more than anything, I want to thank God for them. They also have lost their father some years ago, 
and God has been their circle. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Hallelujah. You want to clap, you can clap. There are some very good clapping that cross the ceiling. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? For God, visitation to just hover around the family. Please, God, hover around also, every one of us. When they first saw the video, I said, ah, I said, I'm supposed to involve for this thing. I told my wife, my wife was so busy. You know, next year, you try to be involved. Tell some, talk somebody, tell somebody, say, be involved. Eh, be, you know, I'm telling people now, people be involved. Be involved so that you can, you know, you can be a beneficiary of the move from Ulu Yomi Adewale Foundation Scholarship. It's always a great deal. It's not just so much about what they get. It comes with anointing, power, mind, wisdom, grace. There are things that it comes with. So when you get it, not just getting whatever it is, you get it something much more. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. We're moving forward. This time, we're going to call our brother who will be, making, who will be taking some collection. He's one of the uh, executive members of the foundation. I was so excited when I thought I saw him in the house. You know, I was like, oh my God, see who is here. He's no other person. And our beloved brother, the husband to our sister, brother, please. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. On my own spiritual journey, I've had the opportunity to do church in many different uh, churches. I was raised in a Catholic house. Um, I'm where I am today because of my uh, interpretation of the word. And, you know, the devil thinks he has certain victories, but we know if you understand the word and the teachings that everything he thinks is a victory is really turned around and really God's. And when you see a, or when I see a pastor who disappoints me, makes me want to go somewhere else. It doesn't, doesn't shake my faith, but it's a reminder that the only shepherd is Jesus, and that the pastor is only there to serve. When I think of your father, who was a friend to me when I needed a friend, I always think back to uh, James 2, 18. You know, tell me about your faith, and I'll show you my faith by my works. A pastor can stand here to be exalted, to collect his money. I mean... Pastor Yomi helped plant other churches around the world. A different kind of person, a lesser person, would want to call himself bishop, but you know as well as I do. That thought never crossed his mind. He was a humble servant. Um, and his decision to teach as he did at Kane University, I think is consistent with what he viewed his mission as, which is to teach. I go back to, uh, as I encourage you to think about a contribution today, and perhaps you'll write on that envelope a pledge for the 2023. And you know, somewhere in the Bible, I don't know where it is, it says, um, better not to make a vow than to make a vow and break it. But don't do it as a vow. Do it as an aspiration, something you hope you'll be able to do. And let, it, let it come back to you through the year without stress, but as, as joy and as encouragement to yourself. Hopefully this year will be as prosperous for you and your families as what you write on that envelope, what you have in your mind to say, well, I could comfortably part with this or that. Um, the Bible also tells us that when Jesus returns, the world, as we know, it will be blown asunder. So one needs to think about what a legacy is and why we honor somebody. It shouldn't be to hold that memory of that person in this world, but to further the mission that that person saw for himself. And as I say, my friend, Pastor Yomi was nothing if not an educator. And this is a wonderful and appropriate way to honor that memory. Not to keep him with you. He's in the better place. You know, don't wish your life away. But on the other hand, you know it's going to be better when you see him again for you. My last thought on encouragement for this collection is taken from Proverbs 22. Train up, in the child, train up a child in the way he should go. 
And when he is old, he will not depart from it. The rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. Part of, I won't twist, I don't like when people take a, a line out of context in the Bible or twist it, but when one thinks about the full armor of God, one realizes we're, we live in a material world and it is appropriate and necessary to train up our children to be self-sufficient and that pro being prosperous is not in and of itself an evil. People should be spending their time not worrying about praying about cover my next bill. That should be easy. Spend your time spreading the word. Spread the time showing the example in this life that what a good Christian prioritization of things will lead you to naturally. Um, that's really all I have to say. And I encourage each of you to do what you can now. Think about next year or think about, the, again, not a vow. Make an aspiration. And think about it throughout the next year or I'm going to make a two-year aspiration. Think about it. Write it on that envelope. That's what you'll remember, writing it down. Nobody's going to keep it. Nobody's going to audit you, audit you. But try that. Thank you. Let's clap for our beloved brother. So now there's going to be an envelope that is passed just for Oluyomi Adewale Foundation only. It may be like a regular envelope, but indicate where they wrote uh, orders. Just indicate and write Oluyomi Adewale Foundation. You just put the amount there. Let's do it quickly, quickly. Envelope in our hands. He has given us and shared the testimony. Please, all these uh, visions and missions and all that is set up under his name has to be financed. Please, let's give bountifully. God will bless you as you do so. Most times it's only once in a year that we do this collection. I think it should be ongoing. But, you know, and there's an account detail too on the screen. So you can... Uh, you can do that on your phone, but I think that is going to be like a bank transfer from what I'm seeing. Okay, so you can do that at home. And, you know, you can also, um, you know, periodically do that. While the women are getting ready for their presentation, let's continue to write on that envelope. Continue to write on the envelope. Continue to write on the envelope. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 500, 300, 200, 50 dollars. As your hand can reach, 20 dollars, five dollars, whatever you can give. Weren't you excited when you saw those people who were who won the scholarship? Your money just touched them through this mission, through this foundation of Uluyomi Adewale Foundation. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. We're going to pro proclaim the power of God over those offerings. Please keep writing. If you finish, you say amen. If you have not finished, keep writing. Write on the envelope. Please, this is not your regular offering. This is Oluyomi Adewale Foundation offering. Okay? Just to support the move of God. Amen. Amen. If you finish, say amen. But I see people still writing. I'll give you a chance. I'm not going to be in a hurry in this one. Keep writing. Keep writing. Hold your pen. Keep writing. Thank you so much. I appreciate you writing. Make sure you have another envelope for offering, okay? This is Oluyomi Adewale Foundation. It's a privilege to be part of this move. Once you have the chance, please support. Keep writing. I see people with pen. When your pen comes down, I know you are finished writing. Keep writing. If you finish, say amen. I don't think everybody said amen. If you finish, say amen. People are still writing. Keep writing. You can copy the number too. Yes. Hallelujah. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this offering that is a support to the mission of your great servant. We ask, oh God, for your blessings upon your people. We ask that you use it to further your work. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Let's just have a song and uh, let's have a song. Let's have a song, then uh, we'll take the offering.
Okay. Go around, just do a worship song. <clears throat> Why are the women choir they're getting ready? If you are using your card, you see Sister Moji or Sister Elizabeth. Yeah, we take cards. Thank you.
Question.
Let's put our hands together for the women in the house. How I wish the men could do like that. But you know, let's celebrate our women. Next time, the men will do better. Yes, really, yes, really. We will try to do better. I'll give you this story. I was, um, after my youth service days, I was involved in little business, right? Then it was like inflow of GSM business in Nigeria. So I started the business and, you know, had this chaos here, that chaos there. People were employed. And luckily for me, I had uh, an opportunity to leave the country to London. So I was going to say bye-bye to this business and hoping that the people who are in charge, you know, will be able to see the business. So I went to Lagos. I think I missed my flight or something like that. So I had to come back. By the time I got back there, that thing did not exist again. What I'm saying is, let's celebrate the human of God in the house. Because it is one thing to start what God has given unto you. It is another thing to transfer to someone who can carry it through. And that is the kind of woman we have in the house, the mother in Israel. Let's celebrate her for how the Lord has helped her. For the power of God that resides upon her. For the vision of God. For the might of God. We thank God for our mother in the Lord. Now we are going straight into the lecture. Our father in the Lord is ready. And we know that our father, Pastor Yomi Adewale, he always surrounds himself with great men of God. People who he adore, who he call his friends. And today, we are privileged to have in the house, via Zoom, a man who will be giving us the lecture is Reverend Dr. Andrew Adebisi on Motoshaw, EDD. Please don't ask me what that is. It may be De Demon Destroyer. DMN. Don't ask me what DMN means. It's a doctor of something. Reverend Dr. Motoshaw Adebisi is a minister of the gospel and the president and CEO of the Encouragers Ministry Incorporated. He's a retired registrar of the State University of New York, SUNY, at FIT, New York, and former registrar of the University of Lagos. He's Emeritus Minister of Christian Education at Bethel Gospel Assembly, New York. He's married and blessed with children and great-grandchildren, he lives with his wife, and they've been married for over 50 years in Sogetis, New York, United States of America. Please, with a loud and a sounding ovation and a standing up, join me. Welcome, Reverend Dr. Andrew Amatosha. <laughs> Please, you can do better than that. Hallelujah. It's Hallelujah. our Father in the Lord. You can do better than that. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the yes, Lord. Yes, 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 yes. Join me, welcome our Father in the Lord, Dr. Amotosa. Yes. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Praise Glory the Lord. to God in the highest. Hallelujah. Yes. You're welcome, sir. Thank you, thank you. I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
of Nazareth. I believe that that introduction was meant for people in Germany, in India, in Europe, because I'm one of you here, I'm one of you, I'm just uh, not able to be with you in person today. We thank God for what he's been doing and what through you, we bless them of the Lord for this special day as we celebrate Jesus again in the memory of our, our friend and our father in the Lord, Yomi Adewale. Now this foundation lecture is in his memory. And with him, along with his wife, his esteemed wife, began the cornerstone ministries under the clear leading and guardians of the Holy Spirit. So I'm honored to have been invited to present this year's foundation lecture. I'm grateful to God for this enablement to be here, how be it virtually, to pay my respects. I'm also grateful to Cornerstone members here in Staten Island, as well as in India, Germany, England, for heeding the word of God in Galatians chapter six, one to 10, by lightening the, the uh, uh, load, the heavy load on the shoulders of our dear Pastor Bola, by each of you doing what you can, praying, playing your own individual part where you are appointed, and by being good to one another, especially, those in the household of God. The theme of this year's conference is the future of education. I know two major things. There are many, it's a man of many parts, but two major things anybody will remember, Pastor Yomi, for is worship. Worship and education. I mean, it's present when it's worshiping, it's infectious. I mean, you just want to join him. Praise the Lord. So I've, I've, I've been part of that all day today as being in your midst, you know, worshiping with you. So the future of education is um, what this conference theme is for this time. Now, with the rate and speed of change in today's world, it's a hazard to try to figure out the future of education. How do I figure that out? To attempt to know what the future of education will be, we must first attempt to know what the future of man is. Indeed, perhaps our topic today might be, might be to analyze the state of things in the world, and from there, make a prediction of what ought to be the topic of today. Yes, the future of man the future of man. How much future does man have before Armageddon? Ask yourself. Already the powers that be on earth have manufactured big bombs. One of those manufactured by Russia is called Sabomba, which means in English, king of bombs. One by America is called gravity bomb. People of God are praying that the Russia-Ukraine war does not develop into a third world war. So what is the future of man if there is a third world war? We pray that won't happen in Jesus' name. There's been a very rapid change in the world since the beginning of coronavirus. We can all testify to that. When we look a little back, we will notice that the world has turned quite different from what it was at the beginning of this apparently unending coronavirus pandemic, which started nearly three years ago and still counting. Then there are the, there are the other parallel and destructive uh, pandemics of storms, fires, and the rise of wicked autocratic regimes all over the world. North Korea, China, Syria, Myanmar, Iran, Sudan, Ethiopia, and Nigeria. The common feature of these regimes is that the governments take pleasure in killing their own citizens who do not conform or conform quickly enough 
to their ways. In the case of Nigeria, the government is quite disingenuous in its method. It opened up borders to let in foreigners to carry out the dirty job, such as Nigeria has become one of the worst places to live on earth. Another trend in today's world is that freedom is under siege, even in the Western world. And in America, once the bastion of freedom and democracy, freedom is under siege. It's under siege. Nonetheless, to reason together about education and its future, we need to try to agree first on some definition of education. Is there a difference between education and training? There is agreement in the intellectual world that training is about skill acquisition for specific jobs. The time training and, and development of an employee describes the capacity training of an employee regarding the set skills required by the employee to accomplish training goals that makes him do his or her work better. It is learning on a specific issue, such as, for example, what are you doing in your technology school? Heat and air conditioning technology. Okay, so that's the kind of a thing we call training. On the other hand, education is about knowledge and the development of the intellect, which is an education of the mind, an education that is intended to produce civilized men and women living at peace with one another, or which the latter goal appears rather elusive today. Education is the path to knowledge that will make the learners develop their full potential and become successful. Okay, let us take that definition as a working definition. One major focus of that definition is that the educated man seeks to live at peace with his neighbor and to advance the cause of freedom, a major plan for societal peace. Obviously, from the observations shared earlier, to which we are all witnesses, we need to know what is missing in the educational process that has made the expected outcome of freedom and peace rather elusive. So that brings us to the topic of today's discourse. Education is about learning, but which knowledge is worth most having? Everybody knows about education. Everybody's involved in one form of education or the other. But which knowledge is worth most having? If we can come to the truth of what is most worth knowing, then that which is most worth knowing is the knowledge that we must have for man to attain the purpose of education. It must be what we will want our children to have. The knowledge that we want our teachers, our pastors, that in church and state to have. And that is the knowledge we ourselves we want to pursue and have. The problem is that even if there is such a subject or body of knowledge that is of the most worth, how may we know it? How may we know it? It was once reported that, that C.P. Snow, it's a, you know, these are big names in, in, in education and knowledge. And one of our believers in English, uh, an English literary critic, once exchanged blows, disputing which knowledge was more important than the other, the knowledge of Shakespeare or the knowledge of thermodynamics in, in physics. I am sure most of us have been able to cope with life quite reasonably well, not knowing of this law, uh, any of these two things. Some, some may never have heard about Shakespeare, let alone thermodynamics. In fact, for many in New York, learning is not beyond recognizing the on and off switch. As all, in 1980, while I was in Colombia, I tried to join a volunteer group in a literacy drive. I was shocked to learn then that there were older, over 50,000 in the city of New York who could not read or write. There were many drivers, and I dare say still are, who could not actually read the road signs. They follow the road signs. They can't read the ones that are written. They just follow the sign. 
left, right, through. Today, about 3.9 million New Yorkers are functionally illiterate. One of four persons in California are illiterate. In fact, 21% of Americans are illiterate. That will shock you. On the other hand, in Cuba, literally they dropped from 99.80% in 1981 to 97.8% in 2002. So apparently, the literacy rate do not reflect in level of peace and harmonious living together in these two nations or even in the relationship of these two nations. You know, so education, uh, what is education? Is it for, for survival? You see, the issue is not about knowledge and man, uh, a man needs to survive. That's what we are talking about. It is not about how a man may survive in difficult situation. The issue has more to do with what man, not a man, must know for society to survive. In other words, what kind of knowledge do we need to have to ensure the survival of society, even as we know it? What knowledge is needed to prevent man's self-destruction? What kind of knowledge do we need to have to prevent us killing one off one another? That would be some of the key ways to define the knowledge that is most worth having today. But where may we find it? What can an educator do to locate this kind of knowledge? Some attempts have been made to answer this question in the past by educators. Some have advanced the notion that that kind of knowledge will evolve once the underpinning concept of our educational curriculum is that man needs to be educated for the purpose of meeting society's needs. Look at that. If the, the purpose is suggested, if the purpose is meeting society's needs, ha, then the education of the most world should be the, uh, the one that meets society's needs. In, the, in this model, which follows the ant hill society, you must have read that even in the Bible, each person is educated to the highest level of his ability so he can efficiently serve the society. Everything is to the benefit of the ant society. Everything is to the benefit of the society. In this society, you do what you are told and for which you have been educated to the highest level. Well, this was the political model of the community society, society, the communist society. In that system, man is conceived as an expendable entity. That's what it summarized to be, the end justifies the means. Man in that concept exists to serve an amorphous body called society, a term quite conveniently interchangeable with government. You know, if the knowledge that it's most worth having makes the individual only a means to an end, then the purpose of what is worth knowing destroys man as becomes a sacrifice to an idea, you know? And a lot of people, uh, system have used that, you know? Uh, no doubt for man to live the full life as Aristotle has powerfully shown, society is required. Yes, we cannot function in isolation. Man is gregarious. It's a gregarious, gregarious animal. But the other way around is palpably wrong. To put this crudely, in the ant hill model of educational purpose, you do not ask moral questions. Individual moral position about what you are doing does not arise. Now, but the truth is this. Man is an end, not a means to an end. Man's, man has an intrinsic, very special kind of value. God created man and put him in charge of the world. You know, in order not to get into to this trap, in order not to get, I mean, in order to get out of this trap, which knowledge must, must we acquire that will make us retain our humanness? And as an end, rather than a means to an end. An end that is, you know, designed by others. The society that is designed by others. They say we should, a man 
should just be leave to, to meet that end. No. Well, in Northern Korea, the purpose of, of man is to serve their president, who is revered and worshipped as God. Okay? He, he dictates who lives and who dies. And it's shared as he does these evils. Anyone passing by this by his image, stop to worship his image, like that of Nebuchadnezzar. That is the truth here today. That is the law. You can't pass by the image and just go. You must bow to the image. Now, even in America, the land of the free, the followers of a former leader had dedicated a home to him with a life-size photo of his in front of the shrine. He, he, de, you know, his dedicated followers will do whatever he says without question. This America, the land of the free. But look, there was a pastor called James Warren Jones, James Warren Jones, who in November 18, 1978, led hundreds of his followers in a mass murder suicide at the agricultural community in Guyana. Some of you may remember that. The final death toll was 909. They killed themselves at his command. What kind of knowledge must man have to eliminate such episodes of the slavery of the mind? We have a, a editions of that in Nigeria, in the prosperity ministry, you know? There was also, you know, in East Africa, a pastor called, let's say, Daniel, I think in South Africa, who on January 10, 2014, commanded his congregation to get down and eat grass in order to be closer to God. And they went, and then he went on tamp stamping on them. They obeyed. It was church, his pastor. What kind of knowledge must we have? That knowledge that we must have is, a, is, a ne is necessary in every area of life, in government, in church, in industry, everywhere. Now, over the years, the academic world has sought to the answer. They thought the solution, the place to find that knowledge that is the most worth is in the great books. So liberal arts schools were established in, search, in the search for an education that liberates an education that ensures that its beneficiaries are able to think by themselves. An education that will ensure that nobody will have command you to eat grass and you eat it, or to swallow petrol and you do so. An education of the mind that will let you be able to discern. Now, one great experiment of that still exists today. And it's called St. John's College, somewhere in Philadelphia, I think it is. You know? Now, uh, St. John's College is a reputable liberal college that runs a unique educational curriculum based on the great books. Students are required to select from a list of the great books which they will study for four years. Now, great books rarely refer to history, historical things in the past, writings in the past, you know? And uh, students are required to select from a list of the great books. They will study it for four years. That university was established in 1870 and it's still existing. The great books, as I said, it's made up of uh, classical works of philosophy, literature, political science, and the like. The great book cur curriculum is still practiced today. If you Google St. John's College, you will find the following reading list from which it's to select for the current semester. Fresh my year study, Archimedes, Aristophanes, Aristotle, Herodotus, Plato, you know, and so on. You see, they select and just read and that you are examined on those books. I mean, the overall purpose of the liberal colleges is to enable the student develop his mind to be able to think independently, solve problems, and provide original solutions. 
products of science don't collect and then go on to do other things so they can become doctors, they can become engineers, they can become what they, you know, they can then go to other professions. But they've already got gotten a, 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 a what can I call it? A training, a, a dose of, 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 of wisdom, you know, of knowledge, of understanding that they can let them carry, you know, the, uh, the tools they are going to learn as engineers. Somewhere in, 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 uh, in France, that kind of system was also made compulsory. It's still there, I think, because a friend of mine who did, uh, who saw it in, 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 uh, in France, had to go to, had to do philosophy. Had to do philosophy. Everybody must do philosophy. Even at high school in Germany and, and uh, Italy, you must do classics to get, if you want to go to university. If you don't do that, then you go to technical college, you're supposed to be inferior. So the general purpose of, you know, the idea is that the general purpose of university education is to liberate the mind, to be a problem solver, and to make each person live at peace with his or her neighbor. Because when you have wisdom, then you are able to live at peace. Liberal education was designed to be education to prepare the beneficiaries for a free democratic society. In fact, coming to the university, my first learning was that I'm coming to the university not just to learn some knowledge, but to be able to live as a Democrat, the believer in freedom, you know, and so on. Uh, now, a pro, let me give you an example. A, a successful product of that kind of training in a bad dog was Dickin Damaliel on not Sunday. On not Sunday, I think I, that's the name. You know, he graduated in classics. What does that mean? He studied from university, Greek, Latin, Hebrew. Okay. And uh, that's what he did. But he became an, an industrialist in Nigeria. Why? Because those disciplines, in fact, that's what they call university degrees in those, in, 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 they call it a discipline. What discipline are you following? Because it's supposed to, why? It came from this library school, library school concept. Why is it called a discipline? Why is it a, a subject called a discipline? Because disciplines your mind, to develop your mind, to educate your mind. So one man to show that once your mind is disciplined, you can do anything, even technical things later. One example of that in Nigeria, as I said, was on Sunday, Gamaliel on Sunday. But in spite of all that, the country is backward. Nigeria is backward. So that today, the life is brutish. It is virtually the same story all over Africa. You know. Um, then similarly, you know, uh, you must have heard about Harvard University. A clergyman, a Puritan named John Harvard, founded Harvard in 1636. He endowed the college with 780 British pounds and its library of 320 volumes. The purpose of the university was to advance learning and perpetuate it to prosperity, dreading to leave an illiterate ministry to the churches when our present ministers shall lie in the dust. I quoted them, but I can uh, explain that. They, 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 they found that they were dying out. Who are these people dying out? Clergymen. What, what, what was important about them? They were the one founding the, this country called America. They were the one running it. And they were preachers, but they were also administrators of government. So they said, we are dying out as, 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 as priests. Let's find a place where they can get training. They, they got their own training in England. Okay, So now they are dying out. So the purpose of university was to advance learning as I said, and perpetuated to prosperity. It is the oldest university in the US and easily the most prestigious university in the entire world. It was started by a man. You know, it's also the wealthier university in the world. And it is significant, especially for the purpose of this paper, that it was established to train pastors for church work. The first few presidents of the university were clergymen. 
the founding curriculum of Harvard was classics. The language of instruction was Latin. And the other subjects were Greek and Hebrew. Other subjects included rhetoric and logic, how to argue, how to you know, make uh, speeches, ethics and politics, arithmetic, geometry, metaphysics, and theology. So Howard was a liberal college by excellence designed to educate the mind as a clergy. Harvard was established to produce clergymen and gentlemen. Women were not initially admitted. And Harvard issued license, what, what the university had that had authority to issue license to whoever wanted to preach, you know, new license to accredited preachers. Naturally, Harvard, exact, Harvard exerted his steady hand in the morals of the society and the integrity of office holders. By law, Harvard must retain an office of chaplain. Now, having regard to the founding philosophy of Harvard and what I've described above earlier, it is most dumbfounding that the current chief chaplain of Harvard University is an atheist. A 44 year old Greg Epstein, he is the author of a book called Good without God. What a billion non religious people believe. Now, ponder on that. Somebody saying, Good without God. An impossible state, uh, situation. Because, because God is the, is the good in God, in good. It, that's what makes good good. And it, how did he come to that conclusion? A billion non-religious people believe. That's what they believe. Non-religious. Okay. So the general uh, uh, belief of a billion non-religious people is what drives this thesis. Now, the story of Harvard is the story of the demise of the knowledge that was at least worth having, even if not the most worth having, that underpinned society that was stable and reasonably morally strong. That was the thing they were, the reason they were able to, to have a society in America, you know, that was stable, that was reasonably moral, you know. And we can see the confusion that ensues when that kind of knowledge becomes lacking. That knowledge promoted the common good within the understanding of an institution and a society that believed in God. Harvard is still training society's leaders, so, but the society has become a reflection of the culture that produced the chief chaplain who says there is no God. And if there is no God, then everyone becomes his own, his or her own God. And there is a parallel history of that, of the people of God summarized. You know, that is the, you know, really the parallel history of the people of God summarized in Judges chapter 21, verse 25. It says, I could put that in music if I was a music person. When there was no, it said that there, was, there was a time in Israel when there was no king and everyone did that which was right in his own eyes. And if we look with some reflection on the American society and the world society and the, 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 Europe, the European society, if we look with some reflection at that, you know, you will find that, uh, you know, for example, in Europe, it's extremely difficult now to evangelize. Christians to evangelize, one of the most difficult places. So, because there, there is the, 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 the God is no longer the king. And so everybody serves whatever seems right in his own right. So that seems to be like this time. And we need again to seek to instate and reinforce in the minds of learners the knowledge that is of the most world. Now, the central truth in the knowledge that is the most world having is that it is not limited to a coterie of intellectuals. It is very egalitarian and it's all empowering. You know, the qualification of the teacher comes from close and deep association with the master. Who is the teacher? The teacher called the learners, you know, the disciples, so that they might be with him to learn from him. 
by being with him. To learn by observing him and following him. Following his footsteps. Then when he knows that the learner is ready, he sends him or her out to teach others and bring them into the fold. You see that command in Mark 3, verse 14. Now, everybody is admissible into that educational process. Everybody. It's an open enrollment policy. And there is no tuition. It is free. But where then shall we find this knowledge that liberates? The war thing is very troubled right now. There is war going on all over the world right now. Only not full scale, but in skirmishes. There is no place where there is peace right now. Racial hatred is on the rise. Apparently, in fulfillment of prophecy, nation shall be against nation. So Matthew 24, 7 says, in this nation, America, the land of the free, there is mass shooting in one part of the country or the other virtually every day. And there is so much corruption everywhere, even in the justice system. Where then shall we find this knowledge? It has to be the knowledge that will be easily available to all. The knowledge that will unite people and nations to live together in peace and unity. Otherwise, man may perish from self-destruction. There was a man who bemoaned that his nation was perishing for the lack of knowledge, for this kind of knowledge. Prophet Hosea, in Hosea 4-5, moans, my people perish for lack of knowledge. And that is the concern we are discussing here right now. That is a whole lot of unnecessary perishing going on in the world around us today. Perishing of bodies, perishing of souls, perishing of peace. In America, children are shooting children. Parents kill their children, even their babies. Yes. Not only in Nigeria, here. In Nigeria, babies are being hugged. If you think 2 Kings 6 29, where two women agree to cook their sons and eat, is exaggeration. Read the news about what is happening to children in Nigeria and America today. The African youth continue to perish as they run in desperation to flee hunger joblessness, government-assisted terrorism, and hopelessness, and wicked leaders all over Africa. In America, the youth is under the tyranny of drugs, and the so-called minorities among them targeted by law enforcement. Hosea says it all because uh, he says, Hosea says it is all, you know, what he says is that, that is where there, there's perishing, you know? It's lack of knowledge. And when he says lack of knowledge, he must, he must be talking to this kind of subject matter of today. The lack of the knowledge that is most worth having. It has to be that. The knowledge that is available to the academic scholars as well as the literate driver. Now, which knowledge? The knowledge of the truth. Which knowledge? The knowledge of the truth. Which truth? The word of God. Oh, but you might be saying, but we are Christians. And we are now fast becoming a minority in this country and in Europe. So even if uh, we have access to this critical knowledge, how can we make it work for a nation, let alone the whole world? Now, once upon a time, there was a group of 12. They were a mixed grill of young people. Their leader was an illiterate fisherman called Peter. They possessed the knowledge, they knew the curriculum, of, they possessed the knowledge, they knew the curriculum of instruction. And these 12 were the teachers of the curriculum. They changed the world. They changed the world. 
The world needs changing again, again now. Everybody who, who's, who's alive in the spirit knows that the world needs changing again now. Now, but once we possess the knowledge and the curriculum of instruction contained in the great books, we can also change the world today. There was an itinerant professor of history who started it all, Professor John the Baptist. He it was who taught the old great books from which the new great books emerged. You know, for 400 years, there was silence. Okay. Anyway, what I think I have been trying to say for the past several minutes is this. At Christmas, Jesus came to a very broken world. A world full of wars and wickedness. He came after 400 years of silence. When God did not speak through any prophet or directly to any man. He came because the world needed change, needed transformation, and came down himself and joined us in our mess to put things right. Then he went back home and left the 12 and threw them us in charge to begin once again to tend the garden. You find out that's what happened in Genesis 2.16. God told Adam and Eve to tend the garden. But this time for us to occupy until he comes back as he instructs in Luke 19, verse 13. Now, what knowledge then is most worth having? The knowledge of the truth. What truth? The word of God. Where do we find this word? In the great books of the Bible. There are 66 of them. You never graduate from the course. It's a lifetime study experience covering every subject every topic, every question that human mind can ever conceive. And the other thing on the cake is this. You do, you do not have to be able to read and write to learn the truth. You only must listen to hear the truth. Faith comes by hearing. And what is more, you do not have to have somebody read, it, read to you. God speaks to everyone on earth every day. Psalm 19. Even if you can't read that psalm, because the, the word speaks. You know, the heavens speak I mean, the glory of God every day when we wake up, He's speaking. They are today uttered speech. Okay. So, um, but how can this change the world? Yes, we can change the world one person at a time. As you bring this knowledge of the truth to the attention of somebody every day. There are some things I like to just say in closing. There was a man called Nietzsche. He gave a parable before, the parable of a madman who went to the marketplace in daylight, he said he was searching for God. Now, the people don't know God. They were saying, what are you, is, is he missing? Did he go on a journey? They were ridiculing him. Then he said, yes, I know. We killed him. We killed God. And then I won't bore you with all he was saying, but it's a parable. And he said, look at the churches. Look at the temples. That the sepulchers where God is buried. Think about that. The light of God is located in the church. It's not located anywhere else. And if you put the light under the bushel, then the world will stagger. And the world is staggering now because of lack of knowledge. The knowledge that is light. Jesus Christ, the light of the world. 
Now, if I'm to round up the whole of what I'm saying in a poetic form, I would I would remember, I would recall one of my favorite um, poets, British poets, John Keats. He says, truth is beauty and beauty, truth. I will repeat that. We don't want to be talking about truth today. Truth is beauty and beauty, truth. And that's all you know or know not. That's all you know or you don't know. You either know it or you don't. And then, and that's all you need to know. Brethren, what is the knowledge that is most, what, what most having? The knowledge that you either have or you don't have. The knowledge of the truth, which is beauty. And you either know it or you don't know it. But that's all you need to know. So we are going to pray. We are going to pray. Now we go to the inner recesses of our heart today and open our heart to the learning, to the knowledge that's available. The knowledge that's available without being a professor, without having to go to anywhere. The knowledge that's available to the, to the pastor and to the congregation. The knowledge that's available to the driver to the literate, the knowledge that's available to all. We are going to ask God to uh, let the Holy Spirit again uh, take us there. And we, the world needs change. And we are the ones God has got to change the world. There were only 12, they changed the world. We are more than 12, we can do more than that. If we bring that, we focus on that knowledge if we embrace that knowledge. So let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the, the very short sharing that you have enabled me to give on a subject matter that's a lifetime study. Thank you, Lord, because every study that's of, of great worth must direct the learner to you, Lord, and to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Is the beginning and the end of all knowledge. I pray, Lord, 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 that today, those of us who hear this, including the speaker, that Lord, you will do a new thing in our hearts, Lord, that will make us again embrace the truth of salvation, the salvation that we received or we are to receive, and the one that's come finally when we get to heaven. Help us, oh Lord, to be on the path of righteousness by focusing on Jesus, the word. Help us to love your word every day, to go into your word, to meditate upon your word. Give us the anointing, Father, to, to, to love your word, to meditate upon your word. They are not to pray. They are not to, 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 to preach the gospel to other people, to tell others about the knowledge that you have given us. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together. Let's put our hands together for our daddy in the Lord, Dr. Omoto Shaw. Why our daddy is still online? Daddy, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, please, can you uh, please uh, pray for uh, the family of our pastor before we go to the next session? Surely. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this day, O oh Lord. Oh, Father, we thank you. What a glorious day. Thank you that we celebrate you, O oh Lord, your, in the life of our uh, esteemed brother who's with you. We thank you for the family you left behind. 
Thank you because even though he left them behind, you are with them. And you've shown you've been with them and continue to be with them. Thank you for preserving them. Thank you for preserving them in you. Because it's 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 not it's it's it, it, there were earliest children, they didn't know you. There were even the child, the children of, of, of Samuel, they didn't count for much. So it's not normally that one once one father is a pastor, therefore, no, it's your grace that is holding them. Thank you, Father. And thank you for the for, 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 for Bola. Thank you, Lord, for the strength you're giving to her. Oh, Father, you know, you, you feed her every day with your word because you felt Elijah went 40 days and 40 nights without food. He just ate one food. Thank you for the way you give your daughter food of the spirit that enables her to go, to do impossible things, to go and do three, four people's work. Oh, thank you for your love and mercy. Thank you for strength. Thank you for the unity of the spirit in the family. Thank you for uniting them in the spirit and making them unshakable, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Thank you, Father. We pray now, Lord, for the new strength. It's a season of thanksgiving. It's a season of great news, good news. It's a season of great expectations. Lord, we pray as we have prayed earlier today for a visitation to them as family and to each and every one of them. Lord Jesus, each of them has a plan you have given to them to implement on that. They have a mission. Each of them has a mission. I pray that all of them, each of them, will fulfill your mission for their lives. Mm. Oh, Father, I pray they will walk in your plan and in your purpose in the name of Jesus. And the enemy will not be able to distract them in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, for anointings that make them focus on you and, not, and you only. As Lord, whatever comes be, before them, whatever difficulty or challenges they have, may they continuously focus on you, the author and finisher of their faith. May they always know that they are winners in you, that they, they will always win in you. Thank you, Father. We cover them now with the blood of Jesus. Oh, we know the magnitude, the importance, the wonder of that blood, even at this time as Christmas is coming. Lord, we, we, we mask them in the blood of Jesus. Let the blood make way for them. Let the blood make way for them. Let the blood make way for them. Let the blood protect them. Let the Lord fight for them. Let the blood make way for them. Let the blood fight for them. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We cover the everybody in the church also with the blood of Jesus. We soak everyone in the blood of Jesus. This season of thanksgiving, this season of great joy, this season of good news, we will ask, oh Lord, that you do all the favor to, to give to everyone between now and the 13 days at the end of the, year, of, the, of the year. Let us all experience good news in every area of our lives. Good news at home, good news in the church, good news in our jobs, Good news, all our expectations will not be cut short. In fact, all those things we have been waiting for, within these 13 days, let there be an 11 hour miracle for them all. Thank you, Lord, for this precious family. We leave them in your hands, O oh Lord. Thank you for your sustaining grace. We give you praise. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you so much for availing your time, for availing your expertise for this great program. The Lord bless and keep you, cause amen. his face to shine upon you and amen. be gracious unto you and amen. give you peace like never before. Amen. In Jesus, then we pray. Thank the you. Lord knowledge amen. that liberates, the knowledge of the truth, the knowledge that liberates is the knowledge of the truth. This knowledge is found in the Bible. 
and the Bible is made up of 66 books. The knowledge is the light. You don't have to be able to read and write to hear the truth. All you just need to do is to listen to the truth. The knowledge, this knowledge is available to all. I pray the Holy Ghost will incubate us so that we'll be able to affect our world. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. I just want to recognize those who are online. Professor Fuller will recognize you. Put your hands together. Um, Professor Fuller Tayo. Um, uh, Pastor... Uh, Pastor John Oluyo Olu Yele, put your hand together. I may not be able to call uh, their title. Oh, I'm not a pastor. Put your hands together. <laughs> Divine, put your hands together for them. Paula Shade Omoch Omoch put your hands together. Please, if you want to clap, clap. This is uh, we had 27 people who were hooked up online for this event. As I was looking at it on my phone, some of them, they don't uh, put their name on. So we have John Ratsika. Ratsika, all the way from India. That's pastor. Our pastor in India. We have Jola Olofimbola. Put your hands together. We have KJ. Put your hands together. Oh, call your jaw, right? That's right, call your jaw. <laughs> Sorry, you know, when it's online, it's different style. It's not in the same normal European style. So, whatever I say, it's, quite, it's correct, okay? We have Moses online. We have uh, Pastor Olu Akiyede. Yes. That's our beloved brother right there from London. We have Olu Fumilayo, I think that is the wife, I think, but I don't know. But that's your sister. Okay, that's mama, the mama sister. Put your hands together. We celebrate you. We are where you are in the service. We also have Brother Roland. We celebrate you. That's brother, that's the brother. That's the tall brother, right? Yes. <laughs> when I grow up, I just want to be like that brother. I want to be as tall as that brother, I'm telling you. We have Brother Samuel Olatunji. Okay. And uh, we also have Brother Samuel Omoko Dion. Uh, there are a lot of Omoko Dion online, no? Everybody say Omoko Dion. <laughs> we celebrate you. Ah, someone get us a big family. Oh. We also have Tara, Tara Adewale. Tara Adewale, put your hands together. That name, that name is very familiar. Then we have Yo, Yo Hanlam, Yo Hanlam. Put your hands together. So we celebrate everyone who, who's here, who wasn't here when I did uh, the welcome. God bless you. I will take our offering now, Sister Beauty. Don't teach. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah? Yeah, we'll take our offering. Yes, God bless. Okay, participants. Hallelujah. Are we ready to give? Praise the Lord. If you don't have an envelope, please let us know so we can give you an envelope. Signify by raising your hand if you don't have an envelope. Hallelujah. All right. Can you give me Luke 6 38? Luke 6 38. We're going to give tithes, we're going to give offering, give, and it will come back to you. Check, check. It says, Luke 6, 38 says, give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye met with all, it shall be measured to you again. And Malachi chapter 3 talks to us about our time. I want us to take a minute here, bow down. The service is still going on. Hallelujah. Just take a minute, bow down, and I want you to prophesy. Pray over your tithe, pray over your offering. It says, when you give good measure, 
pressed down, shaking together, men will give unto you. And we know that this is a world of men. Men will give unto you. God is saying it will favor you. It will connect you to those that will bless you. Not grudgingly, but cheerfully. For God does what? Loves a cheerful giver. And the word of God says when we pay our tithe, we cancel our name out of that register of robbers. You're no longer a robber. You are a child of God. And because you're a child of God, guess what? Say we open the windows of heaven. It will pour so much that will not be enough room for you. And the Bible even goes for that to say, it will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Please, I want you to pray as the year is coming to an end. Use your tithe as a weapon to rebuke the devourer. Use your offering as a weapon to rebuke the devourer. And if I were you, I would give a special offering today. A day where your destiny is changing, has changed. A day of divine visitation. I will give a special offering if I were you. Mighty God, we want to thank you so very much. We want to appreciate you for another opportunity to give. We are eternally grateful for your goodness towards us. Eternally grateful for the ability to go to work. Your word says you are the one who gives it power to get well. By your power, by your mercy, by your grace. You wake us up in the morning, you send, send us out on our way. At the end of a working period, we get paid. And Lord, we have come now to give from what you have blessed us with to you. Daddy, we are grateful. We stand on the authority of your word. That good measure, President, is our portion. We stand on your word, O oh God, that heaven be open unto us. In the name of Jesus. Father, you will do what no man can do. In the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, we want to use this opportunity to pray. For those that are trusting you for a better job, for a better business, whatever they are trusting you for, the Lord in your mercy, doors be opened unto them before this year is over. In the name of Jesus, doors be opened unto them before this year is over. In the name of the Lord Jesus, and Lord, we pray, we will not borrow, we will lend to nations. In the mighty name of Jesus, we plead the blood of Jesus Christ over the sources of our income. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. In Jesus' powerful name, we are praying. Amen. Amen. Come on, let us sing. Come on, let us sing. Come on, let us sing to the King of Kings. Come on, come on, let us sing. Come on, let us sing. Come on, let us sing to the King of Kings. Everybody say, Come on, let us sing. Come and let us sing, come and let us sing to the King of Kings. Come and let us sing, come and let us sing, come and let us sing to the King of Kings. Enter his gate with thanksgiving, enter his court we praise. He is worthy to be praised and for tears. Holy name, glory and honor, majesty and power. He's worthy to be praised, exalted. Holy name, glory and honor, majesty and power. Come and let us sing. Come and let us sing. Come and let us sing to the King of Kings. Come and let us sing. Come and let us sing. Come and let us sing. Come and let us sing to the King of Kings. Come and let us sing. Come and let us sing. Come and let us sing. Come and let us sing to the King. Come and let us sing. 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 To the King of Kings, enter His gate with thanksgiving. Enter His court with praise, for He is worthy to be praised, exalted, holy name, glory and honor. 
majesty and power. Come and let us sing. Come and let us dance. Come and let us dance. Lift up holy. Let us dance. Come and let us dance. Come and let us dance. Come and let us lift up holy. Come and let us dance. Come and let us sing. Come and let us dance. Come and let us. Lift up, lift up, holy. Come and let us dance. 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 Lift the holy. Listen. Then we ask of you one thing that we desire. That as we worship you, Lord, come and change our heart. One thing, what we ask of you, one thing, what do we desire? As we worship, and as we worship you, Lord, come and change our heart. Lord, come and change your heart. Arise, arise. Take your place, be in throne, all the praise arise, King, King of kings, Holy One, all the praise arise, 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 say arise, arise, Lord. Everybody say, Arise, 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 Take your place, be a true throne, Arise, King of kings, Holy One, all our praise, Arise, 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 Some, so, sorry, I'm just. Uh, can you stand here, please? Please, Sister Elizabeth, can you come? Uh, Brother Jai, can you come? So we have just three people, right? I just want us to have a conversation. Uh, tell me something about Pastor Yomi that interests you, that makes you. You know, feel somehow. Mike. All right. Um, so many things, but there's one that still rings in my brain up to tomorrow, which is you have reached 732 But I'm not, you know, I still hear that, you know, that number, you know, I said, leave that baritone, leave your message, you know, God bless you, you know, that kind of a thing. We you think you're talking to him physically, you know. I mean, like I said, many things, but that I still remember it like tomorrow. God bless you. To God be all the glory. Um, what can I say about Pastor Yomi Adewale? One thing. I, I know I could have. He's uh, indeed a father. He's indeed, you know. Uh, there was a day I was uh, I was just thinking about him. I said, <laughs> probably when I get to heaven, he's the first person that I'm going to see, you know. So that, that's how he was close to personally. So I give I give God the glory for his life. That what he did is still present on, like Baba said, 
you know, he left, but he, there's someone that took over. And he, he, that, you know, that took over the, 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 the mentor. And his pastor, Mother Hadiwale, you know, and he will continue in the name of Jesus. So he, he will never die. He's still alive. Pastor Yomi lives on. Amen. Just tell us something about Pastor Yomi. Uh, good morning, church. Good afternoon. Um, Pastor Yomi Adewale is a, was a man of man of honor, respect, loyalty, and a spiritual man of God. I can't I can't even I can't even say many things I've done in my life, particularly even with my family. I remember vividly many things, many things, many things. I remember in, when in that room is still in an office. Many times when I have personal problem that I can't share with anybody, I go down to him and I, you know, explain everything to him. He tell me, Brother Patrick, everything will be fine. And he will go all along, tell me story about life, even right in Unilab many things he went through. And I remember vividly many things he have done. I can't even mention it before. I, even when I don't have a green card, I'm still battling. He will pray for me. He will say, he will, he will tell me God is going to do it. And God did miraculously. Even the person that gave me the green card, he didn't get a time from me. He just give me the platter of God through the prayer. And also, particularly with my the way you took me, I didn't, honestly, I didn't take him, took him like that. He took me with extreme hand, with love and caring. You know, I remember many things when we are going on the crew, you know, church convention overseas. He must have paid the money down for me, but I didn't know. I just, you know, say I'm not going. Even many times I shared it with Pastor, Pastor Paula, I said, I didn't know the pastor has already paid with the church money. So he paid for me. Paid for my, I remember when my mother died, he bought the ticket for me to go to Nigeria. Even though during that time I don't have a job. You know, many, many things, many, many things. I remember when my son, though he had been with the glory now, pastor was there every time, morning, afternoon, night. Even the doctor was telling him, Pastor, you better go home. You know, is he your son? Say, I'm a spiritual father. I'm not a biological father. Morning, night, you will see him there. That alone really showed. And he prayed. Even when he's, anytime he's there, he prayed from morning to night. You come to midnight, you will see him there. You come one o'clock in the morning, a.m., you will see him. You come in the afternoon, you will see him. So that alone, that alone, that alone, he has already won my heart. I respected him, and uh, you know, I most of the things he had, even he had contributed many things into my, not to my life, but to my family. And uh, I give glory to God for his life. May he so rest in perfect peace. Thank you, people of God. Don't go yet. I also don't go yet. Don't go yesterday. I also want to share this little testimony. Uh, well, there was someone one time I was booked for surgery. I, also, I say it every time, but people think it's, and it was my right hand that they booked for surgery. So, and I walked night those days in Manhattan. And before I got to the hospital, guess who was there? The angel of the Lord. Please, if you want to clap, clap. He was, he was there. And not just that he was there, at the end of whatever they need to do, I didn't have to do that surgery no more. Till date, I don't even know if, where that pain, whatever it is, how it looks like. That is the kind of person that we are talking about. To so God be the glory for his life. We celebrate him. The church celebrates him. We salute him. We know that he's resting in the bosom of the Lord. And um, by his grace, we'll continue to do what God wants us to do and keep the, the flag flying high. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm sorry we took some of our time, but I think it is worthwhile. Um, we're just going to run through the announcement. On Wednesday, I think I'll start for Wednesday. Wednesday is our Christmas carol. 
Tell somebody, say Christmas carol. Christmas carol. Uh-huh. Christmas carol. Christmas carol. Please make sure you come on time so that because it's not on Zoom. Okay? It's not on Zoom. It's in person. And our women, they are fully loaded. I hope our men are too. Well, you know what? <laughs> it's uh, December 21, 7 p.m. in person. Let's come prepared for that event. And as it is our custom, at the beginning of each year, we have the first three days inside the church. We're not doing anything in Zoom, Mom. Mom? Okay. So we have first three days of the church, first, second, and third. We are waiting on the Lord inside the church to, you know, to get strength from above for the upcoming year or for the year. So let's uh, make it a date, 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. Let's make it a date. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, as it is our custom, we pray three times in a day or we meet three times in a day for prayers. We start in the morning, 6 a.m., 12 noon, and 8 p.m. in the evening. Usually on Monday, the women, they wait on the Lord in fasting and pray. And the men on Tuesday in fasting and praying. On Wednesday, the youth and the young adults, they fast and pray. And Thursday, our women, they come back again to fast and pray. And on Friday, the whole church fast and pray. Because of our uh, Christmas carol this Wednesday, we will not be having our Wednesday Bible study. So our Wednesday Bible study is translated to our Christmas card. And on Friday is our days of prayers in the evening. So 8 p.m. in the evening, let's hook up and uh, we'll pray together as it is our ninth vigil. Friday, 8 p.m., we'll join for the night vigil. If there's any other announcement, uh, Pastor will let me know. Said, no, our Sunday, our Sunday Christmas. On Christmas Day, we're so lucky to have it on a Sunday. God bless you all. On Christmas Day, because it's a special day, Mama said if she wants to give us, you know, a little bit of uh, relax, for us to relax a little bit. So, it will not be two services like it used to be our custom. It will be like just one service, 10 in the morning, just like the one we have today. Instead of coming, you know, first service, second service, no first, second, first service or second service, one service. 10 in the morning, let's come together, let's worship God. Then I know it's going to be like a very short service so you can go back you know to have your time with your family but you know let's come and give god thanks it's a sunday god bless you all pastor jonas and there is a uh, food at the end of the meeting in the overflow please don't just go Amen. Amen. We want to thank everyone that joined us today. May God continue to honor you as you honor our dear, beloved um, father and founder in Jesus' name. May God continue to bless you and honor you in Jesus' name. Appreciate everyone that have been here that we have not seen in a long time, especially Brother Chris. It's nice to see you. God bless you. We will sing the grace now and then we do our closing salute. And like you say, again, there's food at the back when we finish. So just pass by and take some food with you. Amen. The grace of the Lord, Lord, Jesus Christ, the Lord of the Lord. 
and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be with us now and forever. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I, I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever surely surely In the house of the Lord forever. And in the holy and dear name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, in that mighty and powerful name of Jesus Christ, who loves us so much as to sacrifice his life for us. In the holy name of Jesus Christ, who guarantees a place for you and me in heaven. In the mighty name of Jesus, by whose power we remain holy unto him. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I wish the new year shall be a great year for you and I. We salute you. Have a peaceful week in Jesus' holy name. Amen.